If you're a streamer or content creator, then chances are you've heard of Elgato Stream Deck. This handy little interface is used by thousands of content creators across the world to assist them in managing their live broadcasts. There are tons of videos out there on how you can set up and use your Stream Deck for things like switching scenes, muting microphones, and moderating chat. But there are very few videos about the really advanced things that this device can do. So in this video, I will be sharing nine advanced tips that you can easily implement to upgrade your Stream Deck. Just before we dive into the tips, I want to give a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video, NordPass. Guys, it's 2021. You can't keep using the same weak, repeated passwords everywhere on the internet. It's time you got yourself a password manager where you can store all of your passwords, credit card details, and private notes securely. NordPass is a new generation password manager built by the security experts at NordVPN. It's easy to set up and works across all your different browsers and devices. It'll automatically fill out your login information and even generate super secure passwords for you. So do your future self a favor and sign up for NordPass using the link at the top of the description. You'll get a whopping 74% off plus your first four months for free. If like me, you make use of a second or maybe even a third monitor to manage all of the different aspects of your stream, things like OBS Studio, your Twitch chat, your Twitch dashboard, maybe your, your music software, your audio software to make sure that they're all being sent to the right channels, then you're probably used to arranging all of these applications in pixel perfect locations on your second or second and third monitors. And that can take quite a bit of time. There's a Stream Deck plugin called Windows Mover that you can add, which allows you to save the specific position and size of any open application so that the next time whilst it's open all you have to do is click the button on your Stream Deck and it will snap directly into place. Now I'd recommend actually setting a multi-action of several different instances of this Windows Mover action. One for each application that you use whilst you're streaming. That way it's only one click on your Stream Deck and all of your applications nestle their way into position. If we take this one step further, you could actually in the multi-action add the actual launching of these applications first by using the system open action. Just make sure that you add a suitable delay after the launch actions as you don't want them to trigger the move actions before they finished opening. There's two different plugins for the Stream Deck that I use for my audio. The first is super simple, it's called Audio Switcher, and it allows you to toggle between two different audio devices. So I actually use this button all the time to swap between the speakers and the headset as my default option on my PC, or for swapping between different microphone inputs if I'm testing out a new microphone or audio interface. The second plugin is especially useful for those of you that use something like a GoXLR, or Wavelink software, or Rode Connect, or even voice meter with virtual audio cables. Basically for anybody that's wanting to send certain application audio to different audio outputs. The plugin is called Sound Deck, and it has an action called Set App Audio Device that allows you to easily change the audio device used by any application. Previously, I had to open up sound settings, scroll all the way down to app volume device preferences, and then manually change the output device used by each application. Instead, now I have this setup to allow me to change the output device of any focused application to use my GoXLR's music channel. That way, when I'm getting ready to stream, I can focus Spotify, click one button on my stream deck, and it'll start using the music device rather than my speakers, which now gives me full control over the audio levels of my music using my GoXLR. I have a similar button which does the exact same, but with any chat application and sending it to the chat channel. So if I want Discord or Zoom, or even a call through my browser in Google Hangouts to start using my chat channel on my GoXLR, it's just one button press when the app is focused. Again, just to reiterate, this isn't specific to having a GoXLR. This works with Wavelink software from Elgato or Rode Connect from Rode, or even voice meter and virtual audio cables. It's basically just a way to set a certain application to use a certain audio device. One thing that I think is incredibly important to do before you go live is just to check your internet connection. The last thing you want to do is go live and get your audience all hyped only for them to have a buffering stream because you're dropping frames all over the place. And thankfully, there are some tools in Stream Deck's plugin store that can help you test that. The Speed Test plugin will run a full test on speedtest.net and give you back the results showing your average download speed, but more importantly, your average upload speed and connection quality. This can be useful just to see if there's any issues with your upload speed before you go live. 
WinTools is a plugin with various different actions for Windows users, uh, but in particular we're going to talk about the ping action that you can set up to ping a certain IP address to test your latency. So I have this set up to ping google.com and a couple of different game servers that I use just to give me a good overview of if there are any latency issues. You can even set custom images to show if the resulting ping is higher than a set threshold. So I have that key set to go red if my ping to Google is ever higher than 25 milliseconds. Unfortunately, you can't currently ping Twitch's ingest servers, which are the actual servers that you're streaming to, to test your connection before you go live. You have to currently go through Twitch's API to be able to do that, so that would be a really useful function. I've actually spoken to Bar Raider, who is the guy that's made probably over 50% of the plugins that we're mentioning today, to see if he would be interested in making a plugin to do just that. So if you see this come out in a couple of months' time, you all know who to thank. Well, don't thank me, thank Bar Raider, he's the one that will have built the plugin, but I had the idea. One advanced tip that was shared with me from uh, Phil, who is the technical marketing manager at Elgato, is that you can actually set up this ping tool to also ping your modem and your router or router as Americans say, um, all you need is the IP addresses of those devices and then you can again test things in your local network before going live. If you want a simple and easy way to create countdown timers on your stream, for example in your starting soon scene, there is a plugin called Stream Countdown Timer that you can use to create any length timer and show that on your stream deck which can also update a text file that you can then add into your streaming software. You can choose exactly what is displayed, if anything, when the countdown ends and you can also pause and resume timers with a single tap on your stream deck. If you're ever running a stream marathon where maybe the time left increases when you hit certain subscriber thresholds, you can also set this plugin up to increase or decrease the timer by a certain amount each time you press a button. And for those of you who like to display counters like your win-loss results or how many deaths you've had on your stream, there's also a plugin called Stream Counter which allows you to keep track of how many times a button has been pressed and again output that result to a text file which you can add into your streaming software. That whole process makes it so much easier than going into OBS Studio and updating these numbers manually each time you die. If you make use of an Elgato capture card to capture something like a camera or a second PC or a games console, then you can use something called flashback recording to retroactively save the previous up to 30 minutes as a high quality video file. Now you can set this up to be anything from the past 15 seconds all the way up to the past 30 minutes and I'd recommend having a few different buttons so that you can quickly click it. If it's only a short moment ago you can click a shorter time and then you don't have to scrub through 30 minutes of video footage. This becomes particularly useful if you want to repurpose any of your live content for other mediums where having a full quality version of something like your camera feed would be super helpful. An advanced tip that I would share would be to set up a multi-action to save both the flashback recording of say your camera and OBS Studio's replay buffer simultaneously. This way you'll have both the full quality stream recording and the full quality camera recording that you can use however you want in your editing software without having to do any weird reframing or cropping around your tiny camera. If you like to end your streams by raiding one of your friends over on Twitch and sending all of your viewers across to them, then there's an action in the Twitch Tools plugin that makes it super simple to do. The action is called Live Streamers and it shows you the number of streamers that you follow on Twitch that are currently live. Clicking on that button opens up a folder showing you a preview of all those creators' streams, how many viewers they have, and then if you press on that button, you will then raid that channel with all of your viewers. You can also set this action up to host the channel rather than raid them, but this whole process of finding a channel that you follow that's live and then typing in the raid command just became so much easier. And the little preview that you get on your stream deck can be used to ensure that the streamer isn't on their BRB scene or their ending scene, so you hopefully know the kind of content that you're gonna be sending your viewers to. If you use one of the 25 different webcams that frustratingly, for whatever reason, seems to forget all of the settings every single time you restart your PC, this next plugin is gonna be a game changer. The plugin is called Cam Control and it allows you to manually set with one press all of the different settings like brightness, contrast, gain, exposure, saturation, white balance, the list goes on. To make this really useful, I definitely recommend making a multi-action to change several of these settings all at the same time. 
Now, whenever you're setting up your stream, you can just click one single button to have all of your webcam settings set exactly as you like them without having to go into the camera properties and change each option every single time. If your lighting conditions aren't consistent day to day, you can even set this up to have plus and minus buttons for each setting. So you can adjust your settings on the fly to suit your needs. So newer webcams are kind of built to hopefully not suffer from this so much. But if you're using something like the C920, and I know a lot of you are, this has been an ongoing problem for years now and hopefully this button that you can now add to your stream deck to set all of your settings with one click should hopefully help. Now what do you do when there's an application that you use all the time that supports hotkeys but hasn't yet had a Stream Deck integration built for it? Well, here's a cool tip. Stream Deck has an option to add a hotkey action that allows you to set the button to map to a hotkey. If you come down to F keys here, you'll see that there's an option to map function keys that you most probably don't even have on your keyboard, F13 through F24. If you assign one of these F keys to your Stream Deck button and then head over to the application's hotkey settings, you can then press that button on your Stream Deck and you'll have the exact functionality you want. Also, if you have a 10 keyless keyboard or even smaller, then you can also assign all of the numpad keys to any hotkeys that you want in any application. And you'll know that you'll never accidentally trigger them from your keyboard because your keyboard doesn't even have those keys. Now, throughout this video, I've mentioned a few examples of some good multi-actions, but there are three more examples that I want to highlight. Hate raids are obviously a big problem on Twitch right now, and I think it's definitely worth taking the time to set up a panic button that you can hit as soon as you see this happening on your channel. The multi-action could include changing your chat to follower-only mode, clearing your chat entirely, muting and hiding alerts to make sure that text-to-speech doesn't get abused, slowing your chat down, sending a chat message to explain exactly what's going on to your regular viewers. You could optionally even play an ad if you wanted to capitalize on these new viewers. And of course, creating a stream marker and creating a clip if you wanted to then uh, look into reporting them. The second multi-action that I use all the time is to be able to turn on and off all of the lights in my studio uh, with one single key press. And now Stream Deck supports many different types of products, many different companies. You can obviously use anything from Elgato, like their key lights or light strips, Philips Hue, Corsair IQ, Nanoleaf, LiFX, Color Light. There's a whole variety of different brands that are supported now, and you can add all of these into one multi-action. And the last multi-action that I use all the time, and I see many members of the community have already set up for themselves, is a start stream multi-action, which can do things like open up OBS, and all of your different applications, change to your starting soon scene, muting your microphone and starting music from a DMCA safe music playlist and setting the volume of that, positioning your windows properly like we covered at the start of the video, and starting a countdown timer, start your stream, changing your Twitter name, really the list goes on and on and you can customize this to be whatever you normally do whenever you start streaming. So those were my nine advanced tips for the Stream Deck, but I would absolutely love to see what you guys in the community are using your Stream Decks for. So let me know down in the comments. I'm definitely gonna be continually going back there to check out what you guys are creating and maybe implement some of them myself. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It's the best way to let me know you enjoy this kind of content so that I can make more of it. And if you're new to the Gaming Careers channel, have a look around and consider subscribing. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. If you're a streamer or content creator, then chances are you've heard of Elgato's Stream Deck. It would help if I held it upside down, wouldn't it? I mean, the right way up. <laughs>